Hey guys, so I wanted to do a video on explaining everything to do with this in-body report sheet um, that you get when you do the in-body scan at Gage Strength Training. So um, I'm going to show you the most important things to focus on and really just a breakdown of what it all means. So when you do an in-body assessment with us, this is our full body composition analysis. First, we use the technology that is called the bioimpedance, where it sends three different frequencies into your body and it measures water weight, muscle mass, and body fat, which is really cool and really important. This is one of the most accurate ways to measure body composition using the bioimpedance technology. Okay, So when you look at the top, this top block basically breaks down your whole body weight in the different areas. So this is Jane Doe. Um, she's 130 pounds. 48.1 pounds of her weight is body fat. Um, next, her lean body mass is 82.2. Your lean body mass is compo composed of total body water and dry lean mass. So dry lean mass is essentially if you wrung all the water out of your body, what you would weigh. So we are so we have so much water in our bodies that this is usually a pretty low number. So your lean body mass is basically your weight minus body fat, all right? So that includes intracellular and extracellular water and then that dry lean water mass. Intracellular water is what is inside your muscle cells. So this number will increase or decrease if you build or lose muscle mass or you're really dehydrated. Um, but you don't see a huge change in this number on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, that being said, your extracellular water is what's outside your muscle cells, um, in your bloodstream, and just as extra water weight in your body. So this is the number that you see fluctuate a lot if you're really bloated, if you're carrying extra water weight, or if you're just really dehydrated. Um, and I'm going to come back to this, but when you see your, your, weight fluctuate a lot on a daily basis, it's usually this extracellular water weight number. Um, this could go up or down based on inflammation. Uh, if you're a female and your menstrual period, you're carrying extra water weight or you're really dehydrated, you don't drink a lot of water. All right, so that is how to read all of this. Next, you wanna look at the muscle fat analysis. So this shows your weight, muscle mass, and body fat and really just the orientation of these lines shows what your body might look like. So if you have a C curve here, like this woman does, it just means that your weight and your body fat is higher than we want, your muscle mass is lower than we want, so we wanna bring this number up, your weight and body fat down. So that's really what we wanna see. Ideally, we wanna see this straight up and down um, or more of a D curve, so really increasing your muscle mass, bringing your body fat and weight down, okay? Um, if you see any of these numbers, so any of these right here, um, the arrow on the right-hand side is gonna be uh, on the high end of what's ideal. The arrow pointing down is gonna mean on the low end of what's ideal. And then this block in the middle is gonna be what's, I what's that ideal range for a person your age and height, okay? These are all averages based on um, typical Americans or typical people. So uh, she is in the healthy or ideal range in her weight, okay? But her muscle mass is really on the low end of that ideal range. So we wanna bring the muscle mass up in this person. Um, and also she's a little high on the body fat mass. We wanna bring that down as well, okay? So then we have uh, your obesity analysis. So. BMI, we do not focus on BMI. BMI is the body mass index. All that is is a height and weight ratio. So what that means is if she lost 10 pounds of body fat but gained 10 pounds of muscle, she would look totally different. She would feel totally different, be so much healthier, um, but her BMI would not change. So it's not really a great indicator of success. We do look at percent body fat. So that is the percentage of your weight that is body fat. So basically that is uh, 48, which is how many body pounds of body fat she has, is 37% of 130, all right? 
So when you lose weight, we need to make sure that it is purely body fat. Now the way that works is if she lost five pounds of water, her body fat does not change, then her body fat percentage would go up because the her weight is lower and this number is the same, so the percentage is higher, all right? So that's why it's so important to track body fat percentage. So she's a little high for what we prefer, okay? So we wanna make sure that working with her, she gets into this gray range here, into that middle block, ideal range, okay? Um, so that's the importance of tracking percent body fat. This is one of the most important numbers on this sheet. Now, this tracks her segmental lean analysis, okay? So that is how much muscle she has in each area of her body. So the top line in each area is the actual pounds. The bottom is what percentile she's in. So where she is in relation to other people her age and height, all right? So in her right arm, she's in the 100 second. In her left, she's in the 97th percentile. Um, clearly, she's right-handed. So her right arm is going to be a little bit stronger than her left, or she's had an injury in her left arm. So really, this is just kind of interesting. As far as weight loss is concerned, it's really not that, you know, important. Um, unless, you know, somebody has an injury, like let's say a left arm injury, we can make sure that they're building muscle in that area. So just kind of inter interesting to see how much muscle is in the different areas of your body. Um, moving back down. So this is a water ratio. So this is your extracellular water compared to total body water. So extracellular water reminder is extra water weight, bloating, or you know, ex outside of the muscle cells um, compared to total body water. So this is important. This person is clearly bloated. So she is on the high end of what's ideal. What's ideal is a ratio that leads to 0.38. Um, so she is holding extra water weight right now and that will affect her total weight. Um, so we'll just wanna keep an eye on that, right? So we wanna make sure that she you know, ends up in that 0.38 range, um, or at least that, that gray range here. So she's bloated, she you know, has inflammation for whatever reason. Um, so again, this will change her actual weight, but it will not change her body fat or muscle, all right? Next, um, this top lock basically gives us a recommendation. So uh, it basically says if she lost 21.8 pounds of body fat, it would put her right into that healthy range, right smack dab in the middle of that body fat percentage range that we want. Um, and it says she could also gain 5.5 pounds of muscle. All right. So like we said, she's got a little bit low. She's a little bit low on the muscle range. So if she gained five pounds of muscle, it would put her right in the smack dab in the middle of where we want her to, all right? So this will be a really important goal tracking for us. Um, ideally, we'll wanna see this number decrease um, and this number, you know, all these numbers we wanna see go down. That, that's how we know we're moving towards our goal, okay? So we have fat analysis. So this is the opposite of the lean analysis. This shows you how much body fat is in the different areas of your body. So in right arm, left arm, trunk, right leg, left leg. So she has 3.5 pounds of body fat in each arm, 25.8 in her trunk. Her trunk is everything except your arms and legs. So it is your torso essentially. Um, this is how many actual pounds. And then this is what percentile she's in. So she is in a higher percentile for fat than she is in muscle mass. All right. So that just means that She's got to lose some body fat. She needs to build muscle. That is, you know, exactly what she needs to do to be her healthiest. Okay. So when you do lose fat, this is where you can make uh, comparisons and see where that body fat is coming off of. All right. Your basal metabolic rate. So that is how many calories your body needs to function and be perfectly healthy. All right. So if you laid in bed all day based on your weight, your body fat mass, your muscle mass, that is how many calories your body needs to function normally. So that means your organs are working, your, you know, your heart beating is properly, your heart is beating properly, your lungs are working, everything in your body works fine. Now, where people get into trouble is when they do calorie restricted diets, they try to drop their calories too low. And what we notice and what happens is when you drop your calories below this number, your body starts 
compensating by slowing its vital processes down. So your heartbeat slows, your lung uh, capacity decreases, even things you don't think about like your hair growth slows, your fingernail growth slows, your digesting, your digestion slows. So you, you, you're di not digesting food properly, which means you're not absorbing nutrients properly. A lot of really you know, bad things happen when you go too low on calories. So if you're – depending on your goal, we'll adjust your calories. But for fat loss, we typically go about 10% above this number in calorie intake. So you're giving your body everything that it needs, um, but you're not putting it at risk for you know, having those – compensations okay next we have your visceral fat so your visceral fat <clears throat> is what is underneath your muscle around your organs so that is what puts people at risk for heart disease it is no good we want to see this number below 10 so we'll make sure that this comes down as long as you're along with your body fat um, but this is associated with stress as well so a really high visceral fat and a low body fat percentage is a sign of like a high stress lifestyle, okay? Um, so that is a rundown of what all of these numbers mean. When we track your progress, everybody's goals are different, but we wanna basically always make sure that you're maintaining muscle mass, okay? And your percent body fat decreases, okay? Two big things that we usually see. Somebody may lose weight, but if they're losing muscle mass, that is no good and we wanna, so for example, um, we wanna make sure that you're not losing muscle. So they lost some muscle mass here. When you're losing muscle mass, you're, it's gonna affect your body fat percentage, okay? It's not gonna bring your percentage down the way we want. So we wanna make sure that muscle mass maintains but percent body fat decreases. This is the most important number on this scan. Okay, your weight is not your indicator of success. This moving down is gonna be the biggest indicator of your success here at Gauge Strength Training. So I hope you guys got a great uh, understanding of what all of these things mean. Um, once you really kind of understand this stuff, it's a lot easier to make progress. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out at any time. I'm always around to answer your questions.